Hi, I'm here to share with you how we built a fake well for a film shoot that we did uh, many months ago. Uh, we built this upper portion that we could take on location, and we also built this lower section that you could actually take on the sound stage and shoot all the interior parts of your well. So let's go over to the sound stage and see how we did all this. First of all, we got ourselves a table. We laid out some 1x4s on there to separate the piece of plywood from the table. We're going to be running a router around in a little while. And what that's going to do is it's going to hold the plywood up off the table so the router doesn't cut into the table while we're moving it around. What he's doing right now is he's found the center of the piece of plywood and we're getting ready to create the arcs. And before we just do this with the, uh, the router, we're going to mark it with a pencil just to make sure everything's uh, as we want it. So I like to use this method more than I like to use a, a string. Uh, it's a lot more accurate and uh, as you can see it's, it, it just makes perfect arcs as you move around. This is the assembly we made for the router. Uh, we just took a piece of quarter inch plywood um, and we measured where our, our center point would be. We've got two actually holes marked there. And we took the plate off. Uh, we marked our holes onto that piece of board. It's about, I don't know, six to eight inches wide. We mark our holes. You can see it's already screwed down. If I just remove the plate just like that, uh, you can see um, it's just screwed right onto the router there, and it is a flush trim router bit, so it does have the bearing on it, as you can see, but we're not really going to worry about that bearing. We're not going to worry about that bearing riding around along another piece of wood and giving us that arc. We're going to trust that jig, and as we move the, uh, as we move the router around, it's just going to swing around that fulcrum in the center there, and we'll get a perfect arc. What, it, what they're doing now is they're shifting uh, the screw into the other hole and making the jig a little bit shorter, and we're going to make another pass, and that's going to give us our interior cut of the uh, of the well. You want to move um, rather slow. Uh, let the router do the work. Um, you also want to hold down that that piece of plywood that the router is is held onto. If it if it chatters or if you push too hard, um, you're not going to get a perfect arc. As you can see, it gave us two nice, great arcs. Uh, this is the leftovers from the arc, and I'm going to use that wood to cut out some. Uh, parts that are actually going to hold up, uh, hold the two pieces of arc together. So we're just going to run it on our panel saw, run it on our table saw. We cut those the same width as as the arcs, as you can see, and then we're just kind of lining them up on there. I think we used um, five eight half inch or five eighths inch plywood for this, and we kind of marked them about a foot apart. It's not really important how far apart they are. Uh, we used, I think, inch and a quarter staples on that. Meanwhile, we got another crew that cut out a, a couple of different arcs, much thinner arcs. These are for the lower portions of the well, or the interior portions, as it may. Um, we did the same thing, cut the arcs. Uh, instead of using pieces of plywood as the legs in between, we actually used one by fours. And we nailed and screwed all that together. Actually, you can see we screwed them together. And then we laid eighth inch plywood on top of the arc once it was all together. Now for this portion, it helps to have a partner to help you out. Uh, someone to kind of line up the edges while you're pressing down onto the plywood and getting it to conform to the arc. You're gonna need to put a little extra pressure on it. So here they are working together, getting that nice and lined up so you square up the entire uh, flat, if you would. In another section of the soundstage, we're working on something else. We're working on the actual stones themselves, so we we uh, did a sample pattern, uh, we took some of the foam, uh, we carved it, we painted it, we added mud to it, uh, we carved out the joints. I uh, wanted to see what it looked like before we did the entire thing to kind of get an idea of colors and textures that we were going to use. Back to what we were doing earlier, uh, he's laying down some staples there in the center, um, pressing down hard, making sure those staples go in nice and uh, firm. Um, also making sure that we're pressing the wood, the skin, down to the frame to make sure it's adhering uh, to that frame in the shape that it is in. Uh, you want to make sure your two sides line up. You want to make sure that your bottom edges line up because you want this thing to be square and squared up when you're all finished up. Anything that's overhanging, just kind of run the uh, laminate router over it. Take off, that, take off that extra excess with a flush trim bit. Uh, do it on the sides and the bottom as well. If you have a lot overhanging and you got like, maybe a half inch on one side, an inch on the other, you probably didn't square it up too well, so watch out for that. Uh, this is some leftover foam that we had from a previous project. It already had stones carved in it, but uh, they're very un-three-dimensional. Um, just grout lines were kind of marked in it, so 
uh, we're going to use it, but we're not going to use it in the same way that it was used before. Uh, what they're doing right now is um, we're going to cut this up into strips. Uh, the two-inch flex, the two-inch foam is not flexible, so we need to cut it down into strips that are going to go onto the inside of the well. Uh, we thought about doing some angles on it, but that would mean we'd have to cut double for each piece, and we weren't too concerned about the uh, whether it was, you know, flushed and met up on the on the sides too much. Uh, the foam does have plastic on it. We pulled the plastic off so it uh, it would ad adhere better to the wood. This way, we got foam on foam, I mean, foam on wood contact, uh, and not just um, foam on plastic. And then you can kind of pull the foam off, and then the plastic would stay. Uh, we use foam glue. I think it's PL300. Uh, we glued the backs of each piece, and then we glued the, uh, the sides of each piece as well. We were fairly generous with that, but not too generous because that, uh, that glue can get rather expensive. We had a lot of foam to put on. So you can see we've got a few pieces on. We put some, fo we put some glue on the foam itself and put some glue on the wood itself too and make sure that these kind of stay put. So here I am. I'm I'm uh, carving some of the stones. We're using the pattern that they put on the on the wall uh, when they when they first used this foam, and I'm kind of like using that to uh, carve out grout joints and uh, create each of the stones. Uh, what I'm using there, the tool that I'm actually using, is is what's known as a horse comb, and a horse comb you can get at like a TSC or Tractor Supply Company. And it's much, usually much bigger than that. It's probably like five inches across. But we cut off the two outer bands, and it's a lot firmer uh, on the inside. And you can really get into those crevices and really kind of carve those out. So if, if you don't have one of those tools for carving, they're, they're easy to get, uh, and uh, they work really, really well, as you can see. So what I'm also trying to do is not only just carve in the, uh, the grout lines, but I'm also trying to carve over the tops of the stones, too, so they have some dimension, so they're not just flat. Uh, you can see, because this has already been painted, how I'm carving away, and you can see the white parts are all the parts that I've carved away. So you want to give this some dimension. As I said, some of the stones are going to be set in, some of them are going to be poking out. Uh, so feel free to kind of carve and, and, and really give it a good realistic look. So this is the upper part of the well. kind of looks like a seesaw. Um, it's the part we were working on earlier. We're once again putting on the eighth inch ply. Uh, we're going to have to do the interior and the exterior of this portion of the well because we're going to be putting foam on the inside parts and the outside parts. This is going to be the part of the well that's going to go uh, on location. We also attached this part of the well. It's, it's the same circumference as the, as the long portion and uh, it's going to go on top of that. So we've got an extra three or four feet, however wide this was, uh, that goes on that well, and it makes it that much that much taller. Here they are finishing up the last few staples in this. We've got skin on both sides, and we're going to put foam on both sides as well and carve the interior and exterior of this portion of the well. Um, as you can see, we're putting some mud in between each of the pieces of foam. Uh, it's a kind of a combination of uh, drywall mud, um, fast dry mud in powdered form, paint, and sand to give it a little bit of texture. The fast dry mud is put in there to give it a little kick, uh, so it sets up a lot faster, uh, and the, uh, the mud is just there for, as a consistency, and the paint is there to give it some color. Uh, then we take that concoction a little bit later, and we start rubbing it into the joint lines, uh, or mortar joints, if you would. Uh, we just use our finger. You could probably use a, uh, a pointing tool. Uh, I think I even gave them a pointing tool, but we found we had a little bit more control um, uh, with just using fingers. So it looks like it was hand done. Uh, it looks like it's uh, hundreds of years old. And um, you can hear, you can see here, uh, everything's kind of coming together. Uh, the paint, the mortar joints, the flagstones on the top, the carving of the stones. It all looks really good. Uh, we just got to finish everything out and this thing's going to be ready for production. Here's a view of the backside of the interior part of the well. And here's the interior part of the well, the long part, um, all carved out. This portion, we actually put some mud on top of the uh, on top of the foam to see what that would look like. Another important thing they did was they matched up the stones between the joint uh, to make it look seamless. Um, as you can see, here's a more of a finished product. They added some moss that they got from Michaels, and they put it along the uh, uh, the joint lines. Actually, it, some of it hides some of the imperfections. 
on there. Um, that's the interior. Wasn't quite finished up. Um, you can see we also put some flagstones on the top, kind of hanging over. Um, at the top of the uh, uh, well there, we put some roots coming out. So it looks like at a certain point, like roots are kind of growing in. Uh, this is the base of the well. We just threw some sand and some dirt and some plants. Um, I think the overall well was eight feet with, I think that was a three foot top. It's th There it is on, on location. Uh, you can see the flagstones around the top. Um, the moss really helps it blend in with the surroundings. Uh, the colors look great. Um, they did have a joint there in the center and they tried to mask it with some uh, with some more moss and some and some other plants, but uh, it did have a straight line to it, which could probably easily be uh, fixed. Um, but they didn't think they were going to shoot that. Uh, we put a couple other props beside this and then took it out into a location at Fort Christmas in Florida, and uh, I thought it looked pretty darn realistic. Uh, these are the drafts that I did for it. There's a side view. We've got a top view. You can see the, see the flagstones there at the bottom. Uh, you can see the interior and exterior stones on that. These are the arcs and how we we're going to do the uh, the legs for it. Uh, and this is a top view of the thinner part of the well, which was the lower part. So that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them down below in the comment section. And look forward to seeing you guys next time in the next video.